Hello mate and welcome to the first video in a new series called Unity for Dum Dums and obviously smart people as well. In this video my plan is to explain some of the core concepts of Unity. Unity can be quite an intimidating interface when you first load in and for somebody who's never touched it before it can be really hard to wrap your head around what you're actually seeing so Good news is you won't be seeing the Unity interface in this video at all. All that's going to happen is I'm going to explain to you in layman's terms some of the core concepts that Unity revolves around and then in subsequent videos we can then go into more depth and talk about how to actually do stuff. So what you're seeing on the, on the screen at the moment, this is a game object. Nope, you're not going blind. There is actually a game object there. The problem is, is that our game object doesn't have any shape or form. At the moment, it's just a non-corporeal entity. That's the way I'm going to look at it. Think of a game object as a ghost. Okay. At this precise moment in time, it's just an imaginary thing. It has a position, it has a rotation, and it has a scale. But it doesn't have any physical appearance, so we can't see it. It doesn't have any physical properties, so we can't feel it. It's just kind of an abstract thing at the moment. As you can see, our game object has a transform, which includes its position, rotation, and scale. Every single game object in Unity has a transform by default, which we can set when we're in the Unity editor. But until we add other things to our game object, it doesn't really do anything. It just kind of sits there in memory, occupying a bit of space in our game's memory. In order for us to give our game object other properties, we have to add other components. Components can be added to our game object to make it do stuff. And the stuff that we can make it do is really limitless. Now, Unity does have some out-of-the-box components, such as a sprite renderer, which allows us to give our game object some kind of visual appearance. We can add a sprite to it, basically. We can have a collider, which is a component which detects when our game object collides with another game object with a collider on it. Now, colliders can come in various shapes, boxes, circles, spheres, cubes, uh, polygons, you can even have colliders that match the geometry or the shape of your sprite or 3D model perfectly. But as you can imagine, every vertex, every point that our collider has slows our game down. Now, for a high-performance PC with only a few game objects in the scene, that's not a huge problem. But as you can imagine, in a game where there are thousands and thousands of objects, having colliders that match our game objects perfectly can become quite cumbersome so we have to kind of plan ahead as to what we're going to use for a collider and even in really big AAA games you will tend to see the colliders for games objects such as characters and um, parts of the environment tend to be very very simple uh, very very low geometry objects that kind of vaguely approximate and sometimes in games this can be very painfully obvious you know if you're playing some games you can shoot over shoot something straight in the face and it doesn't even detect it you know because the collider is not perhaps matched to the geometry very well so again these are one of those things that you have to kind of plan ahead and do as best best you can now colliders are not to be confused with rigid bodies although they do work in tandem a rigid body allows us to tell unity that our thing whether that be a inanimate tree or a character has physical properties such as mass which allow us to apply gravity to it and if we combine a rigid body with colliders we can make our object solid so the character can no longer walk through walls or walk through trees or other players or whatever that there's many 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 different types of components that you can add and then once you get into the unity editor you can really explore the many many possibilities that you can have but these are just the absolute basic ones 
Now, there are also developer defined, i.e. things that you can make that you can attach to your game objects just like the Unity components to create new behaviors. One of the most basic scripts that you can write is the player controller script, which basically means you can control your character using the arrow keys, the mouse, the keyboard, joystick, whatever it is you're going to use to control your character. You can also have AI movement or attacking. You can write these scripts in C sharp and apply them to your game object. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to do this as modularly as possible, i.e. don't have the player movement controller and the player inventory controller in the same script because you can have as many scripts attached to a game object as you want. So it's much easier to have each individual part of what you want to put together to build your player character or your game object, whatever it might be to have them in separate scripts so that if you want to change one part, you only have to go to one very small file and not trawl through one script that's got 10,000 lines of code in it. Much, much easier to do it more modularly. Unity will automatically update any game objects when you've attached a script to it and then you change that script. So you don't have to mess around going in updating the script, changing the script um, that it's attached to. If you edit the script and then save it, Unity will detect that you've changed it and it will automatically update the game object, which makes things so much easier. And it will recompile as soon as you save any script and it will tell you if there are any errors and it will employ the new behavior straight away. Scripts can also communicate with other components on the same game object to check values or change them. So for example, in my player movement script, I can contact my rigid body component to check whether or not my character is colliding with something else. I can detect whether or not one of my colliders has been broken through. Um, I can even change the properties of the sprite if I want to by going into the um, sprite renderer from a piece of code that I write and say change the color of my sprite or whatever it is you want to do. So that's another very, very useful thing that you can do in Unity. And it's all out of the box stuff. Nice, easy functionality. So mono behavior is Unity's default script type. And whilst you can spend hours trying to figure out what mono behavior means, and it does tell you on the Unity website, if you want to look it up, by all means do so. But for the purposes of this tutorial at the very, very entry level, just know that it's Unity's default type of script and it will automatically turn any script that you create inside Unity into a mono behavior by default. It includes methods which do stuff when different things happen in your game. For example, when you start the game, when you enable a game object, you disable a game object, every single frame, there's many different default methods that will run at different times that allow you to kind of control the way that your game works from the outset. And you can easily add additional methods to your game objects, which is obviously very useful. Now, for those of you who don't know, a method is just a block of code that can be run by calling the method by its name. So, for example, if you had a method called hello world, when you type in hello world into a script, you can get it to do whatever is contained within that hello world method, which for most game programmers usually means just writing hello world somewhere on the screen or in the console or whatever. But that's all the method is. It's just a function or a block of code that allows you to run that block of code on its own just by invoking it by name. That's really all there is to it. So that's all I'm going to go through in this video. I've already rattled on for almost 10 minutes. I will go into more details in the next one, but for the basic, 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 what does that mean in Unity? Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will speak to you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.